welcome everybody. This is video number 71. This one's going to be seafloor spreading and hairy hess part one coming up. You want to do our yeah, professor I'll, here? Yeah, I'll talk okay. a little bit about him because you remember that we, when we talked about Alfred Wagner, we said that he really didn't have enough evidence to support um, his Pangea theory and his continental drift theory. Harry Hess, on the other hand, uh, he was able to come in, in the early 1900s, mid-1900s, and really started to talk about what force could really move the plates enough to cause the movement that, and really where we are today. Yep, yep. He was a big guy in, uh, was it, what is that, World War II? Am I right? Somewhere in there? Yep. Yeah, World War II and was really in a submarine and really got a chance to actually develop this technology. So that's why he had the one up on Wegner there. World War II. German U-boats were on the prowl. To track them, the Allied forces developed new sonar methods and scientists were enlisted to help survey the ocean floor. When the United States entered the war, Harry Hess was a geology professor at Princeton University. But he also happened to be a Navy reservist, so it wasn't long before he found himself in command of an attack transport ship in the Pacific. To help maneuver when coming in for a beach landing, Hess's ship was equipped with a depth sounder. Now, still being a geologist at heart, he used the sounder to measure the depth of the ocean floor whenever a ship was out to sea. Now, new oceanic crust is created. They, we're going to call them baby rocks. We like to call them baby rocks. They're kind of the newest rocks that are formed. That's right. They happen at a mid-ocean ridge. I'm going to talk about it all together. Continuously for millions of years. This is not a process that happens overnight. So when the dinos were around, this was happening? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Isn't it called uniformitarianism? It is called. There's a 50-cent <laughs> word for you guys. Uniformitarianism. That's Over right. a long period of time yes. in a, kind of like a cycle. Good one. Good All one, right, one so Thomas. Good let's one. Let's think about um, how hot magma erupts, cools, and spreads. Wait a minute. That kind of sounds like those convection currents <gasps> working where hot rocks rise to the surface. They cool off. They come back down. Is that where we're heading? Kind of nice job. All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do a nice job too. So take a look at this diagram, and if you guys could, I don't know, maybe draw yourself a quick one. It doesn't have to be this beautiful or anything, but what this is showing you in the red, if you are looking down here, is that's that hot magma, that hot magma that's down on the mantle, and it's coming up. Okay, let's do a synchronized swimming. Ready? All right, ready? Very nice. All right, now, Mr. Thomas, what happens when it hits the ocean crust? Okay, it's going to cool down. It cools, and what does it form? Baby rocks. Baby rocks. Wait. Baby rocks. That's right. And, but this happens, you said, continuously. That's right. So, right? so it comes up, up, pushes up. Cool. Oh, wait a minute. Here's, here's where our baby rocks <gasps> were. Baby rocks. Push, 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 push. Then push. they get pushed push. out. Push oh, away. that's push what those up. black arrows mean. So right. this is just showing you how it's continuously happening. So your baby rocks are happening right at that surface. Yeah. And then as new rocks are formed, it's pushing the older rocks further right. away. Push them out. Push them out. From that right. ridge. So let's talk about that ridge. You want to talk about that ridge? All right, so a ridge, you know, it's coming up. That hot magma is coming up. It's cooling down. You're going to see like a mountain range. It's, it, it literally looks like an underwater mountain range. Found in every ocean. Um, some of them can be up to 50,000 kilometers That's long. Honking. This is a major mountain yep. chain here. Yep. Um, it like seems on a baseball. Have you ever seen the crisscross little things? That's what we're going to look at in this diagram here. You can see it um, in the diagram in the red and the red little tick marks. Yep, I like this one down here. It looks a little bit so better. It's a little bit of a demented baseball. Game. It is a little bit, yep. The other thing I recently learned about the Mid Ocean Ridge is actually it's the greatest topographical feature on Earth. On Earth. Yeah. It's something we cool. don't really see. Right, because we're there. not down in the ocean. We're not hanging That's out right. down there. A lot of pressure down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going down there. So, as Mrs. Thomas told you, we're going to go back to the Mid-Ocean Ridge here. And these ones are, you've got one satellite picture in two artists' interpretation. And I think they do a very nice job of showing you what Ms. Thomas was saying with the magma coming up, erupting, and forming that new oceanic rock, a.k.a. what we like to call baby rocks. For years, oceanographers surveying the Atlantic Ocean had taken sonar readings that indicated there was something down there, something big. In 1953, they found out what it was, a 12,000-mile-long mountain range. They called it the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The reason it's so great, right? To fill us in, I paid a visit to Neil Driscoll, a geologist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. One of the big discoveries that was made was that there was this ridge of underwater volcanoes that stood high above the seafloor. How high is a mountain in the middle of the Atlantic? 
the average seafloor depths are on the order of about four to 5,000 meters. The mid-ocean ridge sits up at about 2,500 meters. So they sit about two and a half kilometers on average higher than the surrounding seafloor that's shown here in the deep blue color. So that's, uh, that's over a mile high. Yes. All right, summary time. Who was Harry Hess? What did he contribute to plate tectonics? Be sure you can describe and diagram seafloor spreading. I would certainly do it as a set of steps. I think that's always easier. So always thanks for watching, and I'll see you in class.